Hello and welcome. I'm Jacqueline Battle. You know, Proverbs 18, verse 14 tells us that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities. The spirit of a man will endure sickness. But a wounded heart, who can bear it? Why is it important that we minister to our inner man, our human spirit? Because it's in that place that our infirmities will be sustained. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that it is written that we are healed by the stripes of Christ Jesus in accordance with Isaiah 53, 5. We thank you, Father, it is written that, that Jesus carried our sickness and our infirmity in accordance with Matthew 8, 17. So right now in the name of Jesus, we cast out all spirits of infirmity that would attack our bodies in the name of Jesus. And we break and rebuke and cast out the spirit of sickness and disease, sickness such as the spirit of cancer that would attempt to establish itself in any parts of our bodies, such as our lungs or our bones or our breasts or our, our throat or our back or our spine or our liver or our kidneys or our pancreas or our skin or our stomach or our brain. The devil is a liar. The Lord rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. We bind up the spirit of infirmity. We bind up every unclean spirit. We bind up the evil spirits that would set a precedence and set up resonance. We bind up foul spirits that would hide themselves in soul wounds. The devil is a liar. The Lord rebuke you. We release now the power of the blood of Jesus Christ against you. We command the hand of God upon you. We command you to be removed. Get out. Go be cast into the depths of the sea and be rendered powerless by the blood of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that your spirit would come now and set up residence. Your spirit, oh God, will come and cleanse. Let Jesus Christ intercede and be provided himself a petition against every counter petition of the enemy, against every opposing spirit, every spirit that's in opposition of our health and our wholeness and our sound mind and deliverance. During this Passover season, oh God, we thank you that the power of the blood of Jesus is causing the death angel to pass over our homes as we release now our belief and our trust and remembrance. And what the blood and broken body of Jesus Christ has done for us and the blood and water shed from his fish side that washes away, cleanses, redeems, and resurrects our health. We say thank you. Have mercy on our souls. Lord, we yield to the will of your, your Holy Spirit. We surrender now to the will of your Holy Spirit. We trust now that your kingdom come and your will is done in us in this earth as it is in heaven. Have mercy, Father. We receive the forgiveness that you granted unto us. Now deliver our heart from self-condemnation so that we could experience your love. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've not accepted Christ as Savior, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Christ died for my sin. I repent of my sins. I receive the grace of God. And I declare that Christ is my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of Almighty God. Now, what you want to do now is nurture and cleanse and wash your consciousness with the consciousness of the great I am. Meditate on the word of God day and night, observe it to do all according to that is written therein. According to Joshua 1.8, you make the way prosperous and you'll have good success and you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Once again, welcome to the kingdom of the great I am. There's a question on the table. And the question has to do with health. How can health be sustained? How do I walk out the process of being made whole? You understand that there's a difference between being healed, healing, and being made whole. We know that the word of God tells us that laughter doth good as a medicine. And we've been talking about the source of my chi, the source of my life, the source of the spirit of life, the source of my energy system, my meridian system, 
the source that, that renders health and energy and life and restoration to my endocrine system, to my glandular system, the source of my chi. And what we talked about is that there is a vital life force and energy that can't be measured, that we know is the great I am. We understand that. And from that life force came Christ Jesus, wrapped in flesh, walking among us. And when he died, he shed his blood and water shared from his pure side. Blood shed from his bruises and from his stripes. Blood shed from the crown of his head, from his feet and from his hands. And this blood is a life-giving force. During this season of Passover, that started April the 5th at sunset and will run until April the 13th, there is a cyclical energy, a restoration in the atmosphere, a force that exists, that comes through to render the death angel mute, to bind up the tongue of Satan that may be speaking through the voice of ill diagnosis or sickness or disease or death. This spirit resonates in the atmosphere in harmony with wholeness, with health, with restoration, with deliverance from various plagues. So the question on the table is how do we sustain health? The answer is seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. And we know that he sets up these appointed times. Now we're not talking about legalities of the law or killing any kind of animals or anything like that. Jesus Christ was our ever living sacrificial lamb. His blood is, is everlasting. He gave it to us. Uh, he gave us blood the Father gave us blood, according to Leviticus 17, 11, to make our souls at one with God, to reconcile our souls, to atone for our souls, to, to heal and to nature, new, nurture our wounded souls. He was wounded for our transgression. And that blood nurtures our wounded soul. It heals those festering wounds that are in our souls, where the, where the foul spirits seek to set up residence. It's during this time frame that a spirit of health goes in, but not just health, but generational health, generational deliverance, the breaking of generational dopes. I invite you to meditate on the word of God very deeply. The story of the Passover is told in, in Exodus, specifically in Exodus chapter 12. But you want to understand from Exodus chapter 1 all the way through 13, what was taking place. And in Exodus chapter 12, we see them make a break for it. But in preparation, God prepared their soul. When they ate that Passover lamb, and when put, they put the blood on the doorpost, the place where they were going to eat the lamb. When the spirit of death came through, that angel saw that blood and realized that a life had already been taken, that death had already occurred, had already passed through that place. So the presence of death was no longer needed in that place. And because that blood was on the doorpost, the death angel could pass over. During this past over season, I don't know what you've been diagnosed with, but I know the question on the table is how do you sustain health? How does your spirit endure? How does your body withstand? How could it be resurrected to life? And that answer is that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. How do you nurture and minister to your spirit? Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Matthew 4, 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And that word live derives from a word that means to be resurrected to life, to be sustained in health, to be prevented from death. So in answer to the question that's on the table, 
How do you sustain infirmities? How can you endure sickness? Meditating on the word of God day and night, observing, not just reading it, but observing to do all according to that is written therein. When you meditate on it, when you ponder it, when you let it run around in your head and begin to nurture your soul and you speak it out of your mouth in every circumstance and situation, when you're looking at the diagnosis, you speak the word with Jesus stripes. I am healed by whose stripe was healed. You begin to speak that word and declare it. You're not speaking the word to change God because he's already gone before you and prepared the way to receive you. Jesus has already been wounded for our transgressions. He's already been bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Does that mean that we won't have things that we'll have to suffer? No, man born of a woman was gonna suffer tribulations. We understand that. But Jesus says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. There is a process by where you can make it and sustain and overcome and endure. The answer to the question is that there's life in the word, that the very word does the work. Romans 8, 11 says that this spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body by his spirit that dwells within you. By his spirit that dwells within you, he'll give life to your mortal body. The answer to the question, it's by meditating on the word of God, you receive life. By meditating on the word of God, you create a gateway, a pathway, whereby this spirit, this force of life that can't be measured and can't be destroyed, this energy, this chi, if you please, the great I am, whose spirit came forth in Christ Jesus, who yielded himself that his life might sustain us, that we can be enveloped in him and he in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. This spirit, this force that's being used energetically to energize and to connect phone systems and other internet and ethereal things that are that are being used and that are being powered it's that life force surely if it can be used to 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 give energy to your phone if it can be used in other elements to power other things truly it can be used to power your health yield yourself as a conduit a conduit to the spirit of the living god a conduit to this life force that we've been talking about, to the very source of life. And as you yield yourself as a conduit, your spirit will sustain your infirmities. Am I saying that we'll live forever? No, to everything there's a season. To everything there's a season. And during this season, this moed, this appointed time that God set up, he says, if you show up, I'll be there. To everything, there's a season. And I know that we can call on God at any time and he'll answer. But I want you to understand that there are some specific times because there's a cycle that God has set up. A cycle, if you please, that he set up. And during this time, in that cycle, there's a vibration that resonates in harmony with our deliverance and our health. In the word of God, if you recall, when the soldiers came to capture Jesus in the garden, he said, all this time I've been with you in the synagogue. But you didn't say anything then. I'm paraphrasing. You didn't say anything then. He looked at him and he said, but this is your time. This is your hour. To everything, there is a season. Yes, we can call on God at any time. But there are certain times that he has appointed and he stated, I'll be there if you show up. Don't come empty hand. Come with a sacrificial offering, something that you can release, something that you that you will feel, an energy that when you release it, you'll feel that thing go from you. He says, I promise I'll feel that path. 
that you leave, as you release that, that energy of, of that offering that goes forth, as you release that, I'll fill that path with life. I'll fill it with hope. I'll fill it with deliverance because this is the Thank you so much for joining me as we continue this series of The Source of My Chi. I'm Jacqueline Babin. And you've been listening to me on the platform of Women in Ministry TV. I invite you to remember to continue to sow into Women in Ministry TV. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach me on my YouTube channel. You can reach me through my website. You can reach me through Women in Ministry TV. You can Google my name and reach me. I am available to you. I want to remind you that God loves you. And I am definitely praying for you. Blessings.